morning it's Thursday and I'm just about to leave for London I'm sitting on a teenage panel where I'm talking about teenagers and I've only got 12 minutes to do it so it's going to be really tricky to condense 26 years of experience into 12 minutes and I've picked a topic and like everyone and before I do a speech I hope I've picked the right topic <coughs> I'm sure as always, some people will disagree with what I say, but it's okay because that's what I do. And I'm going to be talking about the teenage brain and how it changes and how parents need to shift with that change too. So we'll um, see how it goes and I'll speak to you later. So today is going um, well so far. I've dropped my latte. I have my tights on the wrong way around, which is causing issues and I have lipstick on my coat. So we'll... Um, Hopefully the next rest of the day will go a little bit better. Just got home. I think that went okay today, actually. Um, I was supposed to speak for 12 minutes and I spoke for 13 and a half, but I thought it's kudos to me for nearly sticking to 12 minutes. Um, I was speaking about the teenage brain and how um, parents need to shift and tran um, transition with their um, teenagers when their teenagers go through these um, challenges. So, yeah, I'm something I speak about quite a lot and something I'm really passionate about. It went down well, got asked a few questions. Um, the typical ones is generally, how can I make my teenager be nice to me? And, <laughs> and the answer is really very, very complicated and actually you can't make them be nice to you all the time because they're human. Um, but it went really, really well. Um, beautiful location. I kind of love going to London for a little bit now I don't live there. Um, and the other two speakers were excellent too. One talking about secondary school and one talking about um, social media. So yeah, it was a really, really, um, good day. It's Sarah and I thought I would talk to you about, um, what I spoke about in my speaking gig yesterday, because I think it's like hugely important and it's all about the transition to the, the teen years and how as parents, um, we need to shift and change too. So let me explain why, first of all. Now, a lot of people will look at the teen years and go, oh, they're so difficult. And they will explain it down to things like hormones, peer pressure, the media, or even sometimes, like, you know, the obsession with selfies. <laughs> but actually, the research shows us that it's what's going on in their brains. Yeah, their brains. So I, I'm thinking of zombies then, but let's ignore that. <laughs> Slightly obsessed with zombies. Um, now, this research into the brain and the teenage brain and how it changes is actually fairly recent. I started reading about it possibly about 14 years ago and it's only just making the mainstream. Now the thing is with parenting is that most of the techniques that we have been taught, most of the things out there either don't take this into account or they were created before we even knew this. So the teenage brain changes dramatically. In girls, this starts at about 11, 12, boys, 14, 15, and it, it goes on for about a period of 10 years. If you want to read a great book on this, it's a book called Brainstorm. Now, what happens is the brain suddenly floods with neurons and it decides to remodel itself. Now, just as if we were going to remodel a part of our house, we would move out of that part and... That's what happens in the brain. So the part of the brain that's responsible for balancing emotions, reasoning, decision making, language, you know, all of, all of those great things moves out and it moves into probably the worst place it could possibly move into. It moves into the amygdala, which is the part of our brain that regulates the fight and flight response. So basically, we have all of the, the reasoning, decision making, emotional balancing parts of our brain taking place um, in a part of the brain that is just responsible for fear. So you can see now what the challenge is, <laughs> that you know we haven't got um, somebody who's thinking the same as us in front of us. And a lot of people say that when a child's in the teen years, if you minus 10 years, you've probably really got what's going on in their brain. So what needs to happen is we need to shift our parenting because what we've been doing before is not going to work. All that great stuff we've taught our child up till now, it's not that it's forgotten, it's just that we're in a slightly different place. So let me kind of split this up in a way that, that is, is really simple. I think parenting is three stages. Zero to six is when we are a teacher to our child. So we're teaching them everything. Seven to kind of 12 
is where we are the manager of them. So we become the administrator of them. Have you got this? Have you got that? I remember, I mean, I hated this bit personally. I'm not great at managing myself, let alone another person. Um, and then when we their child gets to about 12 or 15, we need to shift. What happens is most parents don't. They stay in the manager role. You will end up in trouble if you stay in the manager role. Or, you know, they stay in that manager role and it's not working, so they start to control more and the whole thing just, you know, gets really difficult and out of control and, and is involved in lots of arguments. And I'm guessing that you don't want to argue with your teenager and you don't want it to be difficult. So what we then have to do is move into a different um, kind of role. And I believe that role should be a coaching role or a leader role. And I say leader because I think lots of people know the difference between being micro, micro so managed by somebody versus having someone lead them because it's probably happened in their work environment if you have been micromanaged you have hated it probably if you have been led you've been inspired you've been left to make your own decisions so we need to move more into that leader role and what that means and what i suggested to the group i was talking to yesterday is that there's three areas that you can start to work on so one of them is i believe that leaders don't step in to um, solve problems they step back and ask a question so if you're stepping in to solve your teenager's problem I want you to experiment by stepping back and asking a question and I want that question to start with a how or a what so it's a how or what question those two words will get you out of most parenting scrapes if you ask a how or what question I also suggested that we get really clear and concise because a leader is very clear and concise. They don't walk around on eggshells. They don't mix up asks and tells. You know, they don't sort of go, oh, please, can you? You know, they're very, very clear. And what I find a lot of parents are is not as clear. So then, you know, you will, there's times where you'll ask your teenager things and they can say yes, no, or we negotiate. And there's times that you will tell and there's a huge difference. You know, can you do the, the can you load the dishwasher by 9 p.m.? is an ask. They can say yes, no, or go, well, actually, I'll do it by 10. Get downstairs now, we are leaving, is a tell. And there has to be a difference between them, so your teenager knows the difference. What happens is most parents disguise tells as ask, and the teenager negotiates everything. If there is no room for negotiation, it is not an ask. And in the teen years, there is more room for negotiation around a lot of things. But for some, they are clearly tells, so get very clear in how you speak to them. I also think that in, in these teen years, we should move towards a more cooperative approach rather than controlling. Most parents will tell me they are, you know, ha, ha, do have this cooperative approach, but what they're really trying to do is control their child through manipulation. It's not cooperation at all. Um, yeah, teenagers are not the best at cooperation. I'm not going to lie here and tell you this is easy. But let me tell you um, what I've done with my clients, certainly done in my own family that I found really, really helpful, is that when there's a challenge, when you're trying to get through a situation and you want one thing and your teenager wants another, I want you to in introduce a third sort of party into this conversation, and, and that's called the family. So when your teenager's saying, I want this, and you're saying, I want this, and they're like, at odds, ask, what does the family want or what does the family need? And the answers will be different. So to sum up, when your child moves into the teen years, their brain is changing phenomenally. And you need to shift too into more of a leader coaching role. Three ways you can do that really easily is to step back and ask a question rather than stepping in to solve their problems. Is to get very clear and concise in how you speak to your child and get clear when something is an ask and when something is a tell. And thirdly, the question you know that you can ask yourself and your child is what does the family need and don't worry if your child doesn't respond when you ask the how or what question they are thinking about the answer so that's what i was talking about yesterday if you want to know a little bit more about this i believe i have some blog posts on it somewhere so you can email me sarah at sarahnewton.com and i will um, put you in the right direction have a great day bye